couple of weeks ago, I was reminded of one of my favorite cookie recipes. I was over in Nolan Creek, stogging around with my friends, Don and Susan Cassida. Uh, if you missed that video, I'll link to it so that you can see it. But we were over there and Don, he's an expert when it comes to old home places in the Smoky Mountain National Park. And he was showing us some of the old home places. Well, one group of homes that he, that he was gonna show us was actually from a family, different members of the family, different houses along a little stretch. And they were the L-E-Q-U-I-R-E -E family. Now, when I was growing up, if I saw that name, uh, there was a couple of those surnames here in Cherokee County, I thought they were LaQuire, LaQuire. When Don was doing the video, then we seen, I noticed that he was calling them LuQuire, LuQuire. So it's just a difference, and I questioned him about it in the video, and he says, well, that's how they said it in Swain County, at Luquire. So the, the uh, recipe that I'm gonna share with you today comes from that family, but how they pronounced it, I'm not sure if they pronounced it like Don or if uh, they pronounced it the way that I did. So anyway, it's a great, uh, it, the recipe actually comes from a great cookbook, Recipes, Remedies, and Rumors from the Cades Cove Preservation Association. And I'll put that link down below. They still sell the books, so you can still get them. And the, the cookbooks come with a lot of the history of the Cades Cove area. And so these, these few pages that I'm gonna concentrate on today that come from that family were actually submitted by Jean LaQuire, or LuQuire, um, and for the first part of it is he gives a little letter. He tells a little bit about, uh, about the family and how they come to be at Cades Cove. So he says, John LaQuire, born in France about 1758 or 1760, came to Tyron County, North Carolina, now Rutherford County, and fought in Revolutionary War. One of his grandsons, Joseph LaQuire, and wife, Martha Womack, and two brothers and one sister came to Cades Cove during the Civil War. Their son, Grayson, was my grandfather. They are buried at Cades Cove Methodist Church. Grayson married Dan Lawson's daughter, Martha. Their son, Milton LaQuire, married Ruby Thompson. They are my parents. So that was from Jean. And then he goes on to share a few correspondence between his mother, Ruby, and her parents, uh, Milton, uh, I mean, Ruby and Milton, they were, they had moved to Cades Cove, but the correspondence is between Ruby and her mother uh, back in Maryville, her parents, and they're just precious letters, so I'm going to read you a few of them. So this one was January 25th, 1926 from Ruby there in uh, Cades Cove writing back to Maryville to her parents. So she says, Dear Daddy and Mama, how's everybody? Hope this will find you both better. We made it in all right. Never saw so much mud, though. Almost stuck several times. Nearly 11 o'clock when we left Maryville, and it was 2 o'clock when we got here. Been pretty cold up here. The ground is white with snow. Now that fell last night. There's lots of pneumonia up here. Ma LaQuire isn't able to be out and looks awful bad. I fixed our room up Saturday afternoon, put the linoleum rug down. I had to use hay in the straw ticks, but they are pretty comfortable. It's a good thing I came on with Milton because the roads are getting worse all the time and be past traveling if it keeps up. It would sure be a hard trip across the mountain on horseback, but I sure did hate to leave because you all are sick. I hope none of us take pneumonia. It's sure hard to get a doctor up here. Love, Ruby. So, uh, sounds like they had been sick and she was worrying about them, but she had went back home to, back to home. I don't know if they lived there already, if they'd been on a trip, or if that was, sounds more like that was their first time moving there since she was working on the straw ticks. Um, and if you don't know, a straw tick or a, is a, like a bed tick. So she was fixing their mattresses. That's what that was about. So this is another one. This was March 21st, 1927. Dear Daddy and Mama, hope this will find you both feeling good. We're all very well. Snowed some here last night and cold and smoky's white. I haven't got any garden made, not even a lettuce patch. Milton sure was tired when he got home that night. Luther met him with the mule nearly halfway. We're liking the cow fine. She doesn't give a whole lot of milk, but it's awful rich. We get enough to have plenty to drink, all the cream and butter we can use, and a little for the pigs. I'm getting lots of eggs, 25 some days, 
it, and I have just about 30 hens. So, um, and Jean's put a little note here that says that Daddy had walked and led milk cow from Maryville to Cades Cove. So that's that she was writing to let them know that they were liking the cow. That uh, maybe they had something to do with them getting. Here's another one, January 4th, 1928. Dear Daddy and Mama, we'll write you a little while. I write. It, I sure, it sure has been cold up here since Saturday. It was four below zero Monday and was colder Sunday. I've hardly been out, can't get anything done, only cook and hover over the fire. A light snow fell Saturday and Sunday night and the coldest wind I ever felt blew for three days. Milton did all the outside work a little at a time and back to the fire froze. Our potatoes and fruit froze, been as bad as when dad died, and then he's put in parentheses, Grayson LaGuire, he died. I guess we'll kill the other hog before long. It killed a chicken last week and we had to put him in a clothes pen. Are you getting any eggs? I'm not getting many and they're all frozen and my little chickens are all freezing to death. Well, it's about mail time, so I better stop. Write us soon. Love to both of you from us. Love, Ruby. Um, so, sounds like they were having a really cold winter, really hard time there. It's so sweet, makes me wonder with the letters how long it took for them to get back and forth and how anxiously they awaited them when you think about it. You know, today our communication's instant. We can be in touch with someone around the world instant. Uh, but looking forward to those letters um, really is bittersweet. Now, this is the only one um, and the last one that I'll share, but it's coming the other way. It's from Ruby's mother back to her. So she says, Dear children, I hope you are getting along all right. We are as well as common. Ruby, we want to see you and the boys bad, but don't try to come till you are well and strong enough to cross that mountain. Tell Arnold, Arnold to help take care of Mama and that new baby brother, and he's putting parentheses, Gene, that was him, and hope to see you all soon. Love to all, Mother. Um, I really love the part where she says we are as well as common. That's an old way of saying that you're doing fine. What we'd say to do today, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Uh, Pap always said if someone asked him how he was doing, he would say very well. I'm very well. Um, I've read some letters that Pap's grandmother wrote, and she would say that. She would say we're all as well as common. So that's like an old way of saying you're okay. So I really love that. Down at the bottom, Jean has put, I was born Sunday, August 5th, 1928, delivered by Polly Harmon, midwife, granny woman. Uh, so I did not realize it, but Jean shares my birthday. So that's really interesting. And just another reason why I think the cookies are so good. So here's the cookies that Jean shared. So they're ginger cookies, perfect for this time of the year. And it says they make four dozen, uh, the recipe does, but it, it basically depends on how big your cookies are, you know that. So three-fourths cup shortening, one-fourth, or excuse me, one cup sugar, one beaten egg, one-fourth cup molasses. Now I always use sorghum syrup, uh, and I figure that's probably what Jean meant. And a lot of places, kind of interchangeable, they'll, sorghum syrup is called molasses. Um, and then in other places, like here, we just grew up calling it syrup. It was just sor it was sorghum syrup, but it was just syrup. Uh, and since Cades Cove so close, I'm thinking that it was probably that too, but I'm sure molasses would work. Two cups plain flour, one fourth cup teaspoon, or one fourth teaspoon salt, two teaspoons soda, one teaspoon each of cinnamon, cloves, and ginger. Now, instead of trying to write all that down and listen to all my mistakes, I'll put the description to the recipe um, or the link to the recipe in the description below so that you can go see it there. But now I'm going to show you how to make ginger cookies. So the first thing we're going to do is sift the flour, all the dry ingredients. There's my salt and soda, all the spices. Make sure I get all that. So we're going to cream the shortening, sugar, the egg, and the sorghum. I 
make sure we get all that. I love syrup, as we would call it, sorghum. Now that we've got that cream together, we're going to add a little at a time our dry ingredients and mix them in well. Now that we've got it all mixed up, Jean's recipe actually says to chill the dough. I never do that. I just bake them. So I skip that part if you want to try that chilling the dough first you can do that but what we're going to do is shape them into small balls the size of marbles uh, well it really depends the size of large marbles but it really depends on you if you want really big cookies or really uh, little cookies that just kind of is up to you but we're going to roll them, the dough in balls and then roll that ball in sugar and then bake it kind of press it out onto the baking uh, sheet and then bake them so you can let your dough chill, as uh, Jean in the recipe suggests, or you can do like me and skip that part. Okay, so now we're ready to roll a, the dough in some in balls. As I said, it's kind of personal preference how big you'll make them. I aim for about that size, like a large uh, marble. What do we call them when I was a little dough rollers? Is that the big ones that you called them a dough roller? Maybe this is why. Because of cookies. I always loved marbles. Uh, I didn't ever play them, but Steve and Paul both at different times had them. And then when the girls were little, they went through a stage of having them, and they didn't play them either. Steve might have been the only one. I don't know. I'll have to ask him if he actually played games with his or if he just collected them. So now that I've got some of the balls, then the next step is you just roll them. And you could probably skip this if you're, like, trying to cut down on sugar. You don't have to... Do this, I'll scoot this a little bit, and then put them on your pan. They don't spread, well, they will spread. They'll turn into a flat cookie, so probably about there. You can play around with that, but if you wanted to skip the sugar, you certainly could. And you can take a fork or anything, doesn't really have to be a fork, and just kind of press them down a little bit. going to bake them at 350 for about 8 to 10 minutes. Your oven may be slightly different, so you just have to pay attention the first time you make them. So the cookies are done, and my house smells amazing. I wish you were here to smell it. So you can see, these are like a crisp cookie. They kind of have a crunch, and they're so tasty. I don't know if you can see in the middle of them. Mmm. Tastes like fall. You can really taste the ginger and the cloves and the cinnamon. Mm. Really good cookie. And pretty easy to whip up, as you've seen. So, the first time I ever made these, and I found the recipe in the Cade's Cove cookbook, I'd made them, and uh, Katie come in, I don't know where she'd been or whatever, and she's like, oh, you made cookies. And I said, yeah, they're ginger cookies. And she said, oh, well, I don't like ginger cookies. And I said, well, okay, and, you know, I'm sorry. Maybe you could try one and see. Well, after four cookies later, she decided she liked ginger cookies. <laughs> so she, she decided she liked them after all. But they are really good. If you give them a try, I hope you like them. And I hope you enjoyed hearing about the, if you say Luckwire, like me, or Luquire, like Dawn, whichever it is. If you're a Luquire or a Luquire, you can tell me. Uh, how you pronounce it and I hope you enjoyed reading or hearing me read those wonderful stories of those letters back and forth from Gene's family I'm so glad that he documented that in those cookbooks and as always I hope you'll continue to drop back by often as I celebrate Appalachia